Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In this video, we are going to talk about shortcodes. You might be familiar with shortcodes already, but we will go a little bit in detail and we'll see how we can implement that with our load more functionality in the load more posts. Okay. So what are shortcodes? Well, shortcodes are macros that can be used to perform dynamic interactions with the content. So rather than having a long chunk of code, you could actually create a short code and then use a callback function to return that chunk of code. And instead of writing that big chunk, you can just use smaller version of that, right? So if you break the short code into, into two pieces, it's short plus code, right? So you make it short. Uh, if you're wondering what macros are, so macros are basically used to make a sequence of computing instructions available to the programmer as a single program statement, making the program task less tedious and less error prone. Thus they are called macros because a big block of code can be expanded from a small sequence of characters. Okay, so now that we know what short codes are and what macros are, why they are called macros, let's discuss about why do we even need short codes. So, first of all, as a security precaution, running PHP inside WordPress content is forbidden. So to allow dynamic interactions with the content, short codes were presented in 2.5 version of WordPress. Uh, they're valuable way of keeping the content clean and semantic while allowing the end users some ability to programmatically alter the presentation of the content. So inside of your callback function, you will have, have options to add the attribute. You can modify the content and then present it in a way that you want. So you get that flexibility. So let's take an example. When the end user adds a photo gallery to their post using a short code, they're, they're using the least data possible to indicate how gallery should be presented. There are default short codes available and you can create your own as well, which we will discuss in a moment. Now there are several benefits of the short codes, one of which would be no markup is added as we discussed earlier, uh, which means that the markup and the styling can easily be manipulated on the fly or at a later state. Short code can also accept parameters, as I mentioned earlier, allowing the users to modify how short code behave. So as we talked about earlier, there are built-in shortcodes, they're default core shortcodes, WordPress core shortcodes, which are caption, which allows you to wrap the captions around the content. You have gallery to show the image galleries, audio to embed and play audio files, video for embedding and playing video files, playlist, and embed as well. Now there are two types of shortcodes. The first one is self-enclosing which do not need a closing tag. Like in HTML, you have a closing tag. There are certain types of shortcodes which need a closing tag while the others don't, okay? So let's take an example. So this is an example of shortcode, the name of the shortcode, and it is wrapped inside of the square bracket. Uh, you can also pass attributes. You can pass multiple attributes, attribute one equals, so that you have key value pair of attributes that that you can pass to the shortcode like so. And then there are enclosing shortcodes which basically have a closing tag, right? So what's the use of enclosing shortcodes? Well, they generally manipulate the content between the opening and the closing tags. So let's take an example. So you have your opening shortcode, this one right here, you have your content, and then you have the closing shortcode tag, right? And this is how it looks like with the attributes added to them. So now that we know that there are default shortcodes available in WordPress, and at the same time, we also have uh, two separate types of shortcodes, let's talk about how do we create a custom one. So let's take an example of the self-enclosing shortcode first. So to create a shortcode, all you have to do is call the WordPress function, which is add shortcode. It takes two parameters. The first one is the shortcode name. So this is a custom name that you can give. And second one is the callback function name. So you'll need to create a callback function and you need to provide the function name here. Okay, so you create a function called shortcode 
callback it does take attributes you can pass it if you want to and then you need to ensure you always return something from the short code uh, because we're going to echo it out and then finally if you want to display the short code you need to use echo that's for programmatically uh, echo do underscore short code that's a wordpress function then you wrap this inside of code and you put the curly bracket, you put the square brackets, the name of the short code, and if you want to pass any attributes, you can pass that. If your um, if your short code accepts that, right? So this is the self enclosing short code. And let's talk about enclosing short code. So here again, same thing, add short code function. This time it'll take content as well. Do something to the content and then return the content. And then for echoing it out. You again use the same function, but this time you put the content inside of it and use a closing tag for the short code. Okay. Uh, if you're using it inside of a Gutenberg editor, you don't really need to use do short code function. You can just simply use the square brackets and the name of the short code and pass the attributes if there are any. This is only if you want to do it inside of any template, programmatically, in PHP, etc. And that's when you use the do short code function. Uh, there's some of the best practices for short quotes, uh, one of which is always return. And short quotes are essentially filters, so creating side effects will lead to unexpected bugs. So if you're wondering what side effect is, well, an operation, function, or expression is set to have a side effect if it modifies some state values outside its local environment, that is to say has an observable effect besides returning a value to the invoker of the operation. So that's what side effect means. Now the next best practice would be that you should always sanitize the input and escape the output and provide the user with the clear documentation all short code attributes because then it will just make it easier for them to know how to use it. So for our purposes, uh, if you remember from the previous episode where we created the load more post functionality, and where we had this function called post script load more, the job of which was to render the initial post. Uh, instead of calling this function where you need it, you could actually create a short code, let's say post listing, and wherever you want to show this whole set of load more post section, okay, all you have to do is just use echo, do short code, and post listings, right? Here we're not passing any parameters, it's not accepting that, so it's just okay. And and tell me, and this is this is the quiz for you. Tell me which type of short code is this? Is this a self-enclosing short code or is this a enclosing short code? So that's the task for you. You need to tell me in the comment. Okay. So that's how you're gonna just use echo and then you'll be able to use this particular short code. Since we're using classes, that's why you we are wrapping it inside of the square brackets and passing this to it. Otherwise, if you were using, if you were defining it outside of the class, then you would have probably just used post listing and this function name. So this makes it reusable. You know, once you have this short code, you can just use it wherever you want to. Uh, the whole set of functionality comes shipped with it and it just makes it easier for you to use it. You can even create a custom Gutenberg block and just, you know, echo out the do short code there. So wherever that block is used you got that functionality at your disposal so before we wrap this up uh, there's just a few updates that i want to share with you regarding uh, what we did on the previous episode so i have added i have made some updates to the previous code using this pr so you can read about it uh, this basically adds the pagination for google it will be hidden pagination for google and then it also adds a loading text and then it also checks if the request is processing for the load more functionality. So remember we built the load more functionality. So this is going to, uh, we're going to set the is request processing to false earlier. And when the request is made, we set that to true. Okay. And then, and then besides that, if you scroll down, we created this pagination.php inside common, where all we are doing is using the WordPress function called paginate links. We're passing the base, the format, uh, the current page information, the total number of pages, previous and next text. And this is going to generate the pagination for us. Okay. And we're also passing a data attribute called data max pages 
and then we're just echoing out the total number of pages. So this template basically accepts this parameter of total pages and we're going to use this template inside of our function which basically returns the uh, content of the load more post. What this helps is that uh, we don't want to make another query in case if we don't have the next page available. So that is why knowing the number of pages, the max number of pages helps us find out what is the current page and if there are any number of posts uh, that are available, if the next page is available, only then we are going to show the load more button, only then we are going to make the next query, otherwise it doesn't make sense to do that. That's why we are just passing the data max pages in the uh, this div and then we are just pulling this information pulling this information using the JavaScript. Over here, we are setting total pages count, okay? And then here we are just checking if request is processing, then return null, do not proceed, okay? And then once, and then we set the request processing to true, and once we get the, once the request is successful, or if it is, if there is an error, we set the is request processing to false. We do this so that we don't want to send in another request in case if the previous request is already in place, right? And then we also created the another function called remove load more if the last page. So if the user is in the last page, then remove the load more button uh, because we don't want to make another request in case if we're already on the last page. So this basically just takes the next page plus one. And so it takes the total page count, it checks next page plus one is greater than the total pages count, then go ahead and remove that button. So if the button is not there, then we're not gonna proceed with the handle load more. Okay, so thought of just uh, sharing that with you, that we made that changes, all right? Brilliant then. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Thank you very much, bye-bye.